welcome back for the session with type groups which is a very important component in a BAB dictionary. We have seen the same use of type groups uh, previously with our ALV reports and the one but we have used the standard type groups called SLIS. So let me now take you through how to create our own type group and how to use them in our program. It's as simple as that. I'm going to take a very, very small example to get you into an idea of how to use and create type groups. Now, I'm in a web dictionary. I have to choose the radio button type group. and I'm going to enter the name of my type group. So let me start uh, my type group name starting with Z and TYG. PG. This is the name of my type group and I'm going to hit on create. So when the time I hit on create, the next very screen would be the short description screen. So let me type in uh, test for custom type group. And we have seen lots of introduction uh, slides of what is a type group and where it is used and uh, all, all the places where it is used and what is the maximum um, dependency of any report program for the type groups and everything we have seen before. So I will not be extending this particular hands-on with much elaboration. If you, if you would like to know what that type group is, once again go through the previous lecture which is on how to create type groups and what are the uses of it. Now, usually a type group when used in a report program is mentioned as type pools. So type pools is a keyword that is used to denote a type group that has been created. Now I'm going to use a very simple uh, use case here. Let me say constants and I'm going to declare ZTYPG underscore DESC as one variable which is of type C, length let me say is 15 whose value is going to be try type P. This is the value. Now I am having a second variable here. Let me say ZTYPG underscore X of type C whose length is 1 whose value is X. This is my simple declaration that I have given inside my type group. I am going to save it and I am going to activate this particular type group. So you can see that my type group is activated. Now this is ready to be used in any of my report programs from now. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to come back from here and let me not forget the name of my type group. Let me copy this. Go back. Go into SC38 and let me say ZTYPG underscore T denotes program. Hit on create. Let me say calling type group in report. Executable program, save it, local objects. And now, from our report program, I'm going to first denote that this program is going to use the type group that I've created. Go with type hyphen poles. And what's my type pole name? The copy type pole name. Now, the second step, I'm going to declare a data called P underscore CHX, which is of type C length 1. And the next line, I'm going to declare this is equal to X. Very simple example to make you understand how the connectivity is made. Now I'm writing an if condition if p underscore chx is equal to z 
tyfg underscore x then sorry then you're going to write value from type group is going to be ZTY PG underscore DESC. Now, what am I doing here? So, you very well know that in my type groups, when I'm creating, when I was creating a type group, I have declared two variables as constants for which one variable will have a text of 15 characters length and the other one is having a variable with one character length which is of value x and the name of the variable is ztypg underscore x. Let me show you that instead of writing that. Display. See, typg x is x and typg underscore desc is containing some variable. Fine. You can see this is equal to x and this also contains x. The reason why I have given here is that how this is making a connectivity with this type group. Now let me save it, check for issues, activate this, let me execute it. You can see that it is going to the type group and calling this particular variable and pivoting back. Now the actual logic is very very simple. The idea behind giving a type group as always this is going to be serving as a directory of regularly used objects for your program. So whenever you have situations like you are creating a set of programs where some variables will be regularly used, you have to go and declare a directory which is called as a type pool, type group and you have to call them the same way in your report program. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next session.